What is up, baseball fans? I'm your host, Nathan Spees, and welcome to another mascot tier list. Since baseball season has officially started, I think it's the best time to do a tier list where I rank all 30 MLB mascots. And yes, I know, not all teams have a mascot, but we will cross that bridge when we get there. By now, you should already know what a tier list is. If not, then watch my NFL or NHL mascot tier list videos. But in case you don't know, in short, S tier is for the best mascots, while F tier is for the worst. For this tier list, I will be using the same criteria that I did for my previous mascot ranking videos. I will rank them mostly on their costume design, but I will also take into consideration their history, antics, and impact on other mascots. I will also go in alphabetical order. And I should once again clarify that these are my opinions. If you agree or disagree with me on some of my rankings, then that's fine. You can put where you rank any of these characters in the comments section. Please don't get mad at me if I give your favorite team or mascot a low ranking. It's all just for fun, but I do have to be fair. Honestly, if I wasn't being serious with these lists, every mascot would be an S tier. Anyways, with all that out of the way, here's Nathan's MLB mascot tier list. Alright, first up we have Baxter the Bobcat from the Arizona Diamondbacks. I'm going to put Baxter in C tier, mostly because I think he's a little creepy. Like, compare him to the other MLB mascots, he looks really creepy. He looks like he belongs in the NBA as opposed to the MLB. Though that's probably because he was made by the same company that does most of the NBA mascots. But anyways, Baxter's an alright mascot. I mean, you would think a team named after the Diamondback Snakes would have a snake as their mascot, but since they don't have arms and legs, I can kind of understand why they don't have a snake as their mascot. But the reason he's a bobcat is because bobcats are native to Arizona, and also, the stadium that the Diamondbacks play in used to be known as the Bank One Ballpark, also known as the Bob. So like Bob, Bobcat, you get the reference, right? But yeah, overall, Baxter's not really a bad mascot. He can be funny at times, I just think he's a little creepy. So he's gonna go in C tier. Next up, we have Blooper from the Atlanta Braves. I'm gonna put Blooper in B tier, just because he is a ripoff of the Philly Fanatic, and you're gonna see that a lot with some of these mascots on this list. A lot of them are ripoffs of the Philly Fanatic, or take inspiration from him, so be prepared for that. But as for Blooper, I think he's actually pretty good. I understand why they didn't go with a Native American mascot, because that's a little controversial, but I like Blooper. He looks kind of like Beaker from the Muppets, but he has Shrek ears. And you know how the Philly Fanatic has a party favor tongue? Well, Blooper has that too, except this time it comes out of his ears. That's pretty unique. But yeah, he is a really funny and really entertaining mascot. I especially like that one time he tackled a bunch of kids during a football game. That was hilarious. But yeah, I do like Blooper. Though again, he is a ripoff of the Philly Fanatic, so we kind of have to dock points for that. He's a solid B tier. Next up, we have the Oriole Bird from the Baltimore Orioles. I'm going to put him in A tier. He is kind of generic, but I mean, it makes sense for the team. The team is called the Orioles. And he also shares a striking similarity to the logo, which is probably because that's what he was based off of. But yeah, it fits the team really well. It matches the logo. And it's a very classic looking mascot. He almost kind of looks like a college mascot. But yeah, I really like this guy's design. It doesn't look too creepy. It doesn't look too cartoony. It's just, you know, really good. And also, he was inducted into the Mascot Hall of Fame. So that's something to take note of. But yeah, not much to say about the Oriole Bird. He's a pretty good mascot. Next up, we have Wally the Green Monster from the Boston Red Sox. This is going to be our first S-tier mascot. Wally is a great mascot. He's very funny, and he's also a really good choice for the Red Sox mascot. You see, Wally is based off of the green monster wall that's at Fenway Park. It was built to keep people out who didn't buy tickets to the baseball game so that they couldn't watch the game for free. And so because the Red Sox are so iconic for the, the green monster, they decided to make their mascot a green monster. And I really like his design. It's very clean. He looks like a Sesame Street character, which I really approve of. And he also had his own cartoon where he was voiced by Tom Kenny. That's right, Spongebob voiced this guy. But yeah, overall, Wally is a really good mascot. I really like his design. Really good choice for the Red Sox mascot. So that's why he's an S tier. 
Next up we have Southpaw from the Chicago White Sox. Ah, uh, this might be kind of a hot take, but I'm gonna put him in D tier. I do not understand what he's supposed to be, or what he has to do with the White Sox. I mean, is he an alligator? Is he a bird? Like, what is he? Is he a monster? But the name Southpaw is actually a reference to a left-hand pitcher. That's their nickname. And also Southpaw is left-handed. His name is also a reference to the south side of Chicago. But yeah, in terms of Southpaw as a mascot, there's nothing really too special about him. And I kind of like some of the other mascots that came before him a little better. But he was inducted in the Mascot Hall of Fame. He's the most recent MLB mascot to be inducted in there. And you can't argue with a Hall of Famer. So yeah, overall, I'm not really a big fan of Southpaw. He's not a terrible mascot, but he's just not really my favorite. That's why he's in D tier. Next up, we have yet another Chicago mascot. It's, of course, Clark the Cub from the Chicago Cubs. I'm going to put this guy in B tier. I do actually like this guy more than Southpaw just because he actually has some correlation with the team. I mean, the Chicago Cubs are named after, you know, Bear Cubs, so... Makes sense as to why their mascot is a bear cub. The name Clark actually comes from Clark Street, which is where Wrigley Field is located on. As for why Clark's not an S-tier mascot, he's pretty basic looking and his eyes are a little weird, but he's not terrible. He's certainly a lot better than some other mascots I've seen. And also, he might be somewhat of a good luck charm, as just after he was introduced in 2014, the Chicago Cubs actually won the World Series in 2016. So that certainly says something. Anyways, at the end of the day, Clark is a pretty good mascot, and, you know, there's nothing really too special with him, but there's also nothing really bad about him. So I'm going to put him in B tier. Next up, we have the mascots from the Cincinnati Reds. Now, the Reds are an interesting case because they have not one, not two, but four mascots. Gapper, Mr. Red, Rosie Red, and Mr. Red Legs. So since there are four mascots for this team, I'm only going to rank one of them, and I'm going to choose Mr. Redlegs. I'm choosing him because a lot of Cincinnati fans see him as the primary mascot for the team, and he's usually the one associated with the Reds as a whole. Like, he's got statues, he's got the logo, he's even on the side of the stadium. So, I'm going to rank him out of all the four, and I'm going to rank him at a B tier, now you would think Mr. Redlegs, based off of his appearance, he's a ripoff of Mr. Met. But that's actually not the case because Mr. Redlegs actually debuted a whole decade prior to Mr. Met. As for two seasons in the 1950s, he was seen on the Reds' uniforms, although he didn't become a mascot costume until about 2007. But in terms of Mr. Redlegs himself, he's an alright mascot. He's a little creepy, but I do like the mustache and the old school uniform. But yeah, Mr. Redlegs is going in B tier. Next up, we have Slider from the Cleveland Guardians. I'm going to put Slider in C tier, just because he's another Philly Fanatic-inspired character. Although this time it went a little wrong. He's kind of ugly looking, and he looks like something you would see if you took drugs. Like, all the pinks and spots and all that, it's just... It doesn't really look that good. I do like the googly eyes, though. And while Slider is a little, um, ugly... I do have a soft spot for him because he was one of the very first MLB mascots I ever knew about, and he's also pretty funny. An interesting fact about Slider is that he's actually had the same performer since his very first game in 1990. Even after a 1995 incident where he fell off an outfield wall and tore knee ligaments, he still has the same performer to this day, and he's also inducted into the Mascot Hall of Fame. So yeah, even though Slider's a little hated by a lot of people, I do have a soft spot for Slider, so I'm going to put him in C tier. Next up, we have Dinger from the Colorado Rockies. I'm going to put him in A tier. I really like this mascot. It's a cool looking design. You don't really see many dinosaurs in terms of sports teams. And I really like the color scheme with all the purples and the different colors on his uh, frill. Now, you're probably wondering why the team has a Triceratops as their mascot. Well, it's because apparently when they were building Coors Field, they found fossil fragments from a Triceratops. And also, Triceratopses did roam Colorado 65 million years ago. So when you look at it that way, it does kind of make sense as to why their mascot is a Triceratops. It's actually really cool when, um, when he debuted, 
he burst out of a giant egg. In terms of some of his antics, something that's really funny is that whenever a Rockies player is at bat, he will dance behind home plate in an attempt to distract opposing pitchers. But anyways, overall I really like Dinger, he's one of my favorite mascots in the MLB. I love dinosaurs, so that's why he's going in A tier. Next up we have Paws from the Detroit Tigers. I'm going to put Paws in B tier. Now I love my Tigers, but I'm not really a big fan of Paws. There's nothing wrong with him, he is pretty funny and entertaining, but I'm j I just don't really like his design, especially the face. Like, I don't know what's going on with his face, he almost kind of looks like a dog, but you can still easily tell that he's a tiger. I really don't have much to say on Paws, he's a pretty good mascot, though I do think there are better tiger mascots than him. Next up we have Orbit from the Houston Astros. Immediately I'm going to put this guy in S tier. He is one of the best mascots in all of sports, period. Not just, not just baseball mascots, but one of the best mascots in all of sports. I think he is so funny and so hilarious, he actually rivals the Philly Fanatic in terms of being the best mascot in baseball. He's constantly messing with players, dancing, messing with security guards, always getting ejected from games. There's just so much great comedy with Orbit. He's actually so popular that when the team retired him, there were so many people petitioning to bring him back and they finally did a couple years later. So yeah, Houston loves Orbit, and so do I. That's why he's going in S tier. Next up we have Slugger from the Kansas City Royals. I'm going to put Slugger in A tier. I mean, he's almost an S tier for me, but there's one reason why he's not an S tier. And that's because I don't really like how his crown kind of blends in with his head. He almost kind of looks like Bart Simpson. I also wish he had more of a mane. Although it does make sense as to why he's a lion, because, you know, lions represent royalty and the team is called the Royals. So, makes total sense, and I like that they did that. And he's a pretty fun mascot. He's done some pretty funny things over the years, and yeah, he's also in the Hall of Fame. But yeah, not much to say about Slugger. I just really like him. I love my big cats. I'm going to put him in A tier. Next up is the Los Angeles Angels. Now, the Angels are a weird choice because they don't actually have a mascot. However, they do have the Rally Monkey, which they show on the Jumbotron. However, he's not a mascot and the team doesn't really consider him a mascot. This one's a little more unfortunate than some of the other ones because you have the monkey right there. Why don't you just make a costumed character of the monkey and have that as the mascot? I don't understand why the angels won't do that. But because the angels do not have a mascot and they haven't turned the rally monkey into a costumed character, they're going straight into F tier. Next up is the Los Angeles Dodgers, another team that does not have a mascot. They do have these really weird bobblehead characters, but the team has said that they aren't mascots, they're just characters. And so for that reason, and because they don't have an official team mascot, they are also going in F tier. And even if these guys were the official team mascots, I'm still going to put them in F tier because they are creepy as hell. Next up we have Billy the Marlin from the Miami Marlins. I'm going to put Billy in A tier. He's one of the better looking fish mascots, and if you've seen my NFL or NHL mascot videos, then you know how much I have a little bit of a love-hate relationship with fish mascots because sometimes they look pretty good, other times they look pretty bad. But Billy here actually does look pretty good. However, there's one reason why he's not S tier. I don't like his current redesign. I think the older design, even though it looks a little creepy, that looks more like a, like a marlin, like a swordfish. The new one just looks like a mix between Woody Woodpecker and Olaf the Snowman. It just looks so bad, like, I don't like it at all. But aside from the design, Billy is a pretty funny mascot, and he's done some pretty funny things over the years, so that's why he's mainly going in A tier. I can't put him in S tier because of the redesign, but I can put him in A tier. Next up, we have Bernie Brewer from the Milwaukee Brewers. Now, Bernie is an interesting choice because he is a humanoid mascot, and if you guys haven't seen my other mascot videos, you would know I'm not a big fan of humanoid mascots, or at least mascots that are humans, but they still have, like, you know, giant heads. But I actually do like Bernie Brewer, and I'll explain why. But for now, I'm going to put him in A tier. Now, the main reason why I'm going to put Bernie in A tier is because of his backstory and how he was created. 
So Bernie is based off of a real-life fan named Milt Mason, who in 1970, back when the team was still new, he climbed up onto the scoreboard and stayed there until the team could draw in a crowd of 40,000 people. He stayed there for 40 days, and eventually when he succeeded in getting people to come down to the stadium, he got down from the scoreboard by sliding down from a rope. Unfortunately, in 1973, he died from an illness, so the team created Bernie Brewer in his honor. So Bernie is actually a tribute to Milt Mason. One cool thing that Bernie does is after the team scores a home run, he slides down a large slide originally into a mug of beer, but now he slides down into a platform in the shape of home plate. But yeah, overall, I really do like Bernie Brewer. He's one of the better looking humanoid mascots, so that's why he's going in A tier. I love the racing sausages too, by the way. Next up, we have TC Bear from the Minnesota Twins. I'm going to put him in D tier, just because he's very, very, very generic. I don't really know what bears have to do with Minnesota. Are there a lot of bears in Minnesota? Is it like the state animal or something? But I don't really know why he's a bear. Actually, I do kind of understand why he's a bear. You see, the reason why he's a bear is because he's based off of the Ham's Beer Bear, who was the mascot of Ham's Brewery, who was one of the sponsors of the Minnesota Twins back in the day. Although comparing the two side by side, I don't really see a resemblance. And for anybody wondering what TC stands for, it stands for Twin Cities, which is the nickname of Minnesota. But yeah, he's probably one of my least favorite mascots in the MLB, but he's not quite F tier because, I mean, at least he exists, and also I really liked that one time when he caught a foul ball in his mouth. That was really funny. TC Bear is not one of my favorites, but he's not terrible, he's just kind of like, meh. Next up, we have the classic baseball team, the New York Yankees. Now, the Yankees do not have a mascot. However, back in the 1970s, they did have one for a very brief time. His name was Dandy, and he was made by the same people who made the Philly Fanatic. However, the team wouldn't let him walk around the stadium, and he was confined to the upper decks. He was hated by fans, and just, he did not last long. So ever since that, the Yankees have never had a mascot. Even somebody from the Yankees said that mascots have no place in sports which is pretty disrespectful in my opinion. So because of that and how they treated Dandy, the Yankees are going in F tier. Also, get rid of your facial hair policy. Next up, we have a true classic of a mascot, Mr. Met from the New York Mets. He is absolutely deserving to be in S tier. This is because he's actually the very first modern mascot in the MLB, debuting all the way back in 1963. Now sure, he is a pretty basic mascot, I mean he's just a baseball on a human body, but again, he's super iconic and he's an important part of baseball history. I mean, he did help other MLB teams get mascots, he also has a wife and he was inducted into the Mascot Hall of Fame in 2007. And of course, how can we forget about that classic incident when he flipped somebody off because they were taunting him? Yeah, I know the performer got fired, but he totally should have been promoted. And that fan totally deserved it anyways. But going back to the tier list, Mr. Met is a classic, and he is an S tier, and anybody who disagrees with me, go away. Next is the mascot that's probably going to make this tier list a little dated in a few years, but I'm going to include him anyways. And that is Stomper from the Oakland Athletics. I feel like it's appropriate to put Stomper in A tier because, not just because the team is named the A's, but also because he's a very classic mascot, and I really do like him. I love elephants. Elephants are one of my favorite animals, so I'm a little biased, but I really do like Stomper. Though I will say I do prefer Big Al from Alabama a lot better than Stomper, just because Big Al is way funnier. Another thing that I don't really like about Stomper is that his trunk sticks out instead of being lowered. Like, Big Al has a lower trunk and it's also very floppy, so it allows for more movement, but Stomper's trunk is always sticking out, so it doesn't really look that good from certain angles. But aside from that, he is a very classic mascot. Even though he doesn't do much, I do understand why the team's mascot is an elephant because they've had elephants on their logos and elephants have been symbolized with the team. So I think making him an elephant was the best choice. And I do really hope that when the team eventually does move to Las Vegas, if that ever happens, they keep Stomper as the mascot. Even if the team changes their name and logos, please keep Stomper as the mascot. Next up, we have the man, the myth, 
the legend himself, the greatest mascot of all time, the Philly fanatic from the Philadelphia Phillies, S-tier. What can I say guys, S-tier, it's the Philly fanatic. He is an absolute S-tier. He's the best mascot in not just baseball, he's probably the best mascot in all of sports. He's super entertaining, super funny, and just... It, it's the Philly fanatic, guys. I gotta put him in S tier. Also, he's technically a Muppet because he was created by the same person who created Miss Piggy. So that technically makes him a Muppet, which I'm a little biased towards them because I really like the Muppets. Now, I know what some of you guys are thinking, like, Oh, he's not. he doesn't have anything to do with the Phillies, and what is he even supposed to be? Well, to that I say, I don't care. And also... He's actually supposed to be a bird from the Galapagos Islands, but he doesn't really look like a bird, but I don't care. I wouldn't have it any other way. The Philly Fanatic is not just important to mascots, but he's also important to sports as a whole. Some of your favorite mascots would not exist if it weren't for the Philly Fanatic. In fact, the Mascot Hall of Fame would not exist without the Philly Fanatic because that Hall of Fame was created by David Raymond, who was the original Philly Fanatic back in the 70s, and of course, it makes sense for the Philly Fanatic to be the very first mascot inducted into the Hall of Fame. But not only that, he's actually in the Baseball Hall of Fame too. That's how important he is. But anyways, I've said enough about the Philly Fanatic. He's an S-tier mascot. Wouldn't have it any other way. He has to be S-tier. Next up, we have the Pirate Parrot from the Pittsburgh Pirates. I'm going to put him in A-tier. He's another one of my favorite mascots. I really just like how he looks. He's super goofy looking. And he's done some pretty funny things over the years. He's actually based off of the parrot from Treasure Island. They actually did have a pirate as their mascot not too long ago. But come on guys, the parrot is way better. Now the reason he's in A tier and not S tier is because, and you're not going to believe this, he's actually a drug dealer. I'm actually being serious. Like, do you guys know about the Pittsburgh drug trials scandal in 1985 when a bunch of pirates players were caught using drugs? Well, who do you think gave him the drugs? The Parrot. I'm not making this up, by the way. You can actually look this up. The Parrot did give them the drugs. So yeah, that's why he's not S-tier. But I still love the Parrot nonetheless. So he's going to sell an A-tier. Next up, we have the Swinging Friar from the San Diego Padres. Now I know what you're thinking. Wait, isn't the San Diego Chicken the mascot of the Padres? To that I say, no. While the chicken is often mistaken for the San Diego Padres mascot, he was never actually associated with the team. He was never the official mascot in the first place, he was just created in San Diego, that's why he's called the San Diego Chicken. But as for the Swinging Friar, I'm going to put him in C tier. He's one of the better looking humanoid mascots, but he does kind of look like a mix between Fred Flintstone and the Little Caesars mascot. He's okay, he's pretty friendly looking, and he is pretty entertaining. He's actually based off of the Spanish Franciscan Friars, who are partially responsible for creating the city of San Diego. And originally, when the mascot was introduced, he was played by a real person. And he was also featured on the logo. Is it just me, or does the logo version kind of look like Wallace and Gromit? I'm not complaining, I love that show. But anyways, the Padre is a C tier for me. Not the best, but also not the worst. Next up, we have Lucille from the San Francisco Giants. I'm going to put him in B tier. Despite his name being a play on the name Lucille, Lucille is actually a male. Him being a seal actually makes sense because San Francisco has a bunch of seals and sea lions on the bay, and, you know, they're often associated with California and San Francisco, so that, may that does make sense. He's also a seal because he's a reference to the former San Francisco minor league baseball team, the San Francisco Seals that were pretty popular in the early to mid-1900s. But as for Lucille, I think he's a pretty solid mascot. He kind of looks like a rapper. He hasn't really done anything, like, extraordinary. He hasn't done anything really, really funny, but he's a pretty entertaining mascot nonetheless. Next up, we have the Mariner Moose from the Seattle Mariners. I'm going to put him in S tier, just because he's one of the most iconic baseball mascots in my opinion. Like, whenever I think of a baseball mascot, I may think of Mr. Met or the Philly Fanatic, but another one that's up there for me whenever I think of an MLB mascot is the Mariner Moose. He's a pretty entertaining character, even though he does look a little creepy. It's really just because he hasn't really aged all that well, but actually, he th I think he's aged pretty good. 
I do like that he is a moose because moose are actually pretty common throughout Washington and Seattle, and their population is continuing to grow each year. You want to know something interesting? Even though he's seen as very iconic today, back when he was first introduced, he was not well received. The crowd even chanted, kill the moose, when he was first unveiled. But eventually people did grow to love him. One of my favorite antics that he would use to do is he would rollerblade behind an ATV around the stadium. This stopped after they got a new stadium, and also in 1995 he ran into an outfield wall and broke the hell out of his leg. Thankfully he was okay. So yeah, the Moose is a very iconic mascot in my opinion. He's one of my favorites, so I think he's totally deserving for an S tier. Next up we have Fred Bird from the St. Louis Cardinals. I'm going to put Fred Bird in B tier. I don't know if this is a hot take or not, but... He's not really my favorite Cardinal mascot. I mean, honestly, he doesn't even look like a Cardinal from some angles. Like, compare him to the Arizona or Louisville mascot, he doesn't really look like a Cardinal. He almost looks like a Penguin. I'm also not really a big fan of his big, wide-open smile. Like, he looks like he's screaming or he's constantly shocked. Like, <laughs> he just looks so funny. But I guess that's part of his charm. And he is pretty funny and entertaining throughout games, like I've seen some funny stuff that he's done. And at first I wasn't really a big fan of the name Fredbird, but it turns out the reason why that's his name is because it's a play on the word Redbird, which is another nickname for Cardinal Birds. So even though I didn't like Fredbird at first, he has grown on me a lot, so I'm going to give him a B tier. Next up we have Raymond the Sea Dog from the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm going to put him in D tier. I don't really know what to think of this guy. Like, what is he supposed to be? What's a sea dog? I mean, you would think they would make him like a stingray or something because the team is called the Rays, but what is a sea dog? Okay, so sea dogs are actually a type of seal, but he doesn't really look like that. He doesn't look like a seal or a dog, but actually, he is an accurate representation of a Florida man. No offense, Florida residents, and I've seen videos of him, he's not as comedic as some other MLB mascots, but he's not bad. But he is still going in D tier. I, for one, prefer DJ Kitty much better than Raymond. Next up, we have Rangers Captain the Horse from the Texas Rangers. I'm gonna put him in C tier. He's a pretty bland looking mascot. I mean, he's a horse. He's a horse, of course, of course. I actually thought he was a camel when I first saw him, but he's actually not a camel. He is a horse. He is actually a Palomino horse. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but that's what kind of horse he is. I do understand as to why he is a horse, because horses are a common symbol for Texas. And also, Rangers, which is what the team is based off of, they use horses. So it does make sense. But overall, there's really nothing too special with him or what he does, but he's not a terrible mascot. I'm just, you know, there's other ones that are better than him. So that's why he's going in C tier. Next up, we have the second-to-last mascot on this list, Ace from the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm going to put him in B tier. I don't really have much to say about him. He looks okay. There's really not much to him. Uh, I don't really like how he has, um, like, his head shape is really weird. It's not pointy like an actual Blue Jay, and his eyes are a little creepy, but he's not a bad mascot by any means. So I'm going to put him in B tier again. Nothing really too special about him, but also nothing really bad about him. He's just kind of there. Next, we have the last and final mascot for the MLB mascot tier list. It is Screech from the Washington Nationals. I'm going to put him in probably D tier. What is up with this guy's mouth? I mean, just like Fredbird, he always looks like he's screaming because of how wide his mouth is. I understand that's where the person inside looks out of, but... He could have closed the mouth a little more. Like, why does he look like he's screaming? And also, compared to other Eagle mascots like the Philadelphia Eagles or the Washington Nationals and a couple other Eagle teams, he's not really that special. Like, he's kind of generic and a little basic, but I mean, hey, pretty much every team in Washington, D.C. has an Eagle as their mascot, which makes sense because Eagles are the U.S. symbol. They're associated with Washington, D.C. But... I feel like they could have done a little better with Screech. He's not the worst one, but he's also not the best. So that's why he's going in D tier. I do like the racing presidents, though. They're pretty funny.
And that's my MLB mascot tier list. What do you think of this? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below which MLB mascot is your favorite. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for the NBA mascot tier list releasing around probably October. Bye-bye!